Welcome to the Dad Code Podcast. This is DDS, where real fans come for real sports talk and no BS. We are your hosts, Blake Melton, Bradley Newberry, and Matthew Parker. Parker, it is good to be back. Ah, it is, guys. What a week of football. My gosh. And we're going to be kind of going back in the past a little bit to recap two weeks since our last show was postponed yeah. uh, we're going to start with the vols um coming into last week the vols had a great win over south carolina where they won 45 to 20 in that game parker they had 247 rushing yards no touchdowns hooker looked great we called out that there were some o-line concerns but uh, they did exactly what you expected them to do to do against a South Carolina team that none of us have really respect for. No, South Carolina is not good, and and that score doesn't even dictate what it actually was. I mean, it right. it, it should have been just it, it was a pick your own score kind of yeah. game. Yeah, I mean, it, the game was over after first quarter. I mean, yeah. it, it was literally, I mean, twenty eight points, wasn't it after the first quarter? Yes, and, and I mean, it, they didn't have to do anything. Else. It, 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 it's hard to keep anybody focused after it's 28 to nothing after the first quarter. Just try to get out of their health. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's really all you're trying to do. And, you know, unfortunately, Tennessee's been bit by the injury bug all year, and they continue to be. So. Now, and, and then on the other hand, Ole Miss comes into last week coming off of a crazy-ass game against Arkansas, 52-51. to 51. Daddy had a feeling down there. And uh, what do you think about that two-point conversion play? Man, <clears throat> you know, we've had some time to think about it. I mean, I st- I, now that I've had time to think about it, at the time I thought that it was, you know, no, please just go to overtime, take your chances. But in a game like that where it was like neither team could stop each other, uh, it was probably the right call to try to go ahead and end it there. I just think that they might have called the wrong play, quite frankly. But exciting game. I think Arkansas is for real. I think Pittman is probably your coach of the year. Uh, just just with his body of work up to now, but um, but yeah, it was a good game. But uh, wish Arkansas could have pulled it out. Pittman is incredible of a coach, by the way. Yeah. Um, I as a fan wanted them to kick the, the extra point because I wanted more football. Keep going. Yeah, and college football overtime is like my favorite. I love it. I think it's awesome. But the smart play was to go for it. Play was stupid. But with how those defenses were playing, I mean, they were moving it at will. Like, why not go for it? Yeah. Just get the win. I mean, and it was really exciting. I would have loved to have seen overtime there. I was messaging back and forth to Blake. I was like, they just need to go for it right here. <laughs> you know, coming back from the beach. I'm like, they got to go. I did, I, nobody's been getting stuff. And I loved it. As soon as they scored the touchdown, I mean, Pittman was just like. Yeah, I mean, no question. Immediately. No, what, no hesitation. Uh-uh. So uh, then we come to this game where they're playing each other here. Um, Ole Miss visiting Knoxville, the return mm. of Lane Kiffin, which he was met with a, a nice warm greeting, I would say. You know, he's mm. loving all, every minute of it here. <sighs> Balls, <laughs> Ole Miss, not as high scoring as everyone thought. I mean, the no. crazy over under was like 82 and a half, and yeah. I made some money picking the under, but. Uh, Man, let's stick with the game talk first, though. Uh, Blake, what stands out here uh, to you? Uh, you're looking at it from a quarterback perspective, a defense, overall team. What do you see from how this game played out? So, first things first, I think really what what happened is, uh, is as many yards as were put up, I still think both defenses actually played really well in this game. And I have to say, and I'm going to go ahead and say it on record because I was not uh, convinced on Matt Corral, I think everybody's. Un- I think he's been undersold as a quarterback. Uh, not because he's necessarily that great of a passer or anything like that, but I think he makes good decisions, and that's huge in this in this college landscape. And I I can't take anything away from him there. The guy's a gutsy guy. He makes good decisions. He's not particularly flashy, but he knows how to read a defense. And as soon as he saw that Tennessee was, you know, dropping back, he was gone. I mean, he ran for what? 10 a clip yeah. every time. Yeah. 200 yards rushing. I mean, mm-hmm. it was unbelievable that he ran that much. And they're going to – he ran thir- – how many rushing – 30 carries. 30 carries. carries. Mm-hmm. Uh, going to – he's going to get – Kiffin's going to get him killed, what he's going to do if, yeah. he run, if he keeps running that much. But you're right. The scoring was lower than expected, lower than what I expected. I mean, how do you score 26 points against this defense? You know, 
Ole Miss is, isn't good. There were 10 punts in this game. I, I don't understand how Tennessee, not even just Tennessee, how the both teams combined only scored 21 points in the second half. Yeah. Um, but the the story of this one to me was an injury. I mean, I know it was at the end of the yeah. game, but uh, losing Hooker. That's lost, bad news. It lost this game. If you look at uh, the win percentages after the game, if they like analyze the stats and all this stuff and who who should have won the game, uh, the Tennessee was one of the highest of the teams that lost. If they played this game a hundred times, according to the stats, Tennessee wins it seventy times. Wow. Yeah. I mean, one thing that stood out to me too was my goodness, the total plays from both teams. If you guys have those numbers up, mm-hmm. Ole Miss almost ran damn a hundred plays. The balls are just shy of eighty, I believe. But my question to both of you is did we almost see the same amount of injuries or people laying on the turf as offensive plays run? I mean, this has got to be something that's got to be addressed at some point. I don't know if I I liked the idea. Somebody brought it up on the broadcast that, you know, if you go out for an injury on that series, you you can't come back for the entire series. You know what? It has to be more penal because you can't just lay down and then come back a play later. I, I love that idea, but the, to play the – but then I started thinking about it to play devil's advocate on that. What if you're a quarterback that gets the wind knocked out of him on the first play of the drive, like legit, you know? Mm-hmm. Are you gone for <clears> – <throat> should it be the same penalty for 10 plays? Is it someone faking it at the end? Well, maybe it's not the whole series. Maybe it's two plays yeah, or I, three plays. Yeah, I don't know what it is, but there so, has to be something. It has to be more penal because, I mean, honestly, it was ex- – literally, it was like every time we got a, a first down, they laid down. They we did, knew it was coming. We it, knew it was coming. Old Miss did it 11 times in the fourth quarter. I think it was 18 for the game, but 11 in the fourth. And what? It, and what's the, what's the real shame is – it's now you're questioning people who might legitimately be injured. Right. So, so that's another reason why you can't keep people out for plays because somebody that's legitimately yep. injured is like, I'm going to stay in. I'm, I'm not going down because if I go down, I'm going to miss plays. I, I don't know what the answer is. Because there, if, if, on <clears throat> offense, if you do it, maybe you get penalized a timeout. Because on offense, if you do it, you lose 10 seconds. You get penalized a timeout sometimes. Defense, there's, no, there's, there's nothing. I don't know what the answer is, but there has to be something. There are some cases that we saw, and it's not just this game, but the, a a player is running, limping, whatever, towards the sideline, and the coaches are like, get down. Well, I mean, you know, maybe there's a dis- distinguishment that needs to be made that are you going down because you have cramps or are you injured? And if you're injured, you have to go out for the series. If you have cramps or wind, whatever, yeah, two right. classifications. And if it's cramps or something, then – the team maybe gets X number per game and or half or whatever. And you know what? If you do exceed that, then you start losing timeouts. It, it, and you're right. It's not just this game. It's I, I just it's oh. happened to be yeah. last week at Iowa. If y'all saw the there was a play where they needed them to stop the one of them to slow it down, and literally someone caught a coach on the sideline, fall down and roll over on the sideline, and then one of the players did exactly that. Yeah. Don't you worry. We'll get to Iowa. Oh yeah, for this man, right but, here. But yeah, it's it's just so bad. It is well, and Lane Kiffin knows the style of offense, so he knows when the momentum's going. Of course, and every time we got to that point, they dropped. Well, maybe how about this? What about no subbing? Somebody goes down I, because that's the whole point, right? Because that's what Tennessee's offense is based on: is go so quick that you can't bring people in. Mm-hmm. Someone falls down though, and yeah, nothing you can do. You, you can want. sub that one guy, and nobody else. Okay, so when when everyone at home was seeing this happening and the 100 and however many thousand people in this stadium were seeing this happening. 102, 455. Yeah, so tension, to say the least, was starting to build, starting to build. Blake, before we keep talking more about the game, you wanted to call out something about this officiating crew. So some interesting facts here about this officiating crew. Guess what game this officiating crew is most known for this year? Old or Mississippi State and Memphis. Exactly. Uh oh. So this this uh, this group of officials has a track record, even before the Ole Miss or, or Mississippi State Memphis game, of being uh, a a group of officials that makes a lot of game changing calls. And Bradley, you being a former, you know, albeit youth league 
umpire, the best umpires and officials are the ones you know are never there. That's right. You, you, your goal you don't know that they're is even there. that you don't want to be noticed. Yeah. You, you don't want the noticed. players to be noticed. Mm -hmm. You don't want to be interacting with the players or the game. Just call it and keep going about. Your yeah. Business. I mean, look, there were spots that, you know, it's like spotting is kind of a it's it's kind of a hit or miss thing to be able to argue. But I have yet to find anybody that can articulate intelligently why the scoop and score was not a touchdown. I heard no whistle. There was no whistle. They never blew a whistle I, ever. I mean, just because the quarterback they had, stands there. They had there. two officials running with Tyler yeah. Barron to the end zone. I'm just saying, just because the quarterback stands there not knowing what's happening and doesn't I'm pretty mean sure they the threw play's the, over. And I'm pretty sure they threw the beanbag, too. It, it, it was. It didn't make any sense. I mean, I, I, and you're right. This crew is awful. And it's not just this crew, though. Officiating across the SEC this year is like Pac-12. I mean, it's so awful. And a, a, a game that come, I don't understand why they assigned this crew to this game because there's more tension in this game than maybe any game in the SEC this year, right? Yep. And they assign this awful, awful crew to this. And I'm with you. That play. It, it makes no sense. I've watched it. I've listened to other people's an, analyzing it, and I, it, it makes no sense. There's no forward momentum. He, he's going backwards. He's standing there. I, mm. Yeah, it almost is like, and Lane Kiffin's out there with the ups to make or the refs to make it even look worse. Yeah, he's like telling them a story that oh everybody stopped. I, they heard a whistle. It, it, uh, just because like they, he was saying there. he was saying that they heard a pre snap whistle. And, and, that, and I was like, dude, no. They're... So I'll read to you the SEC's explanation here. This is Andrew Gast Gastelum from SI.com. Um, according to the SEC, says the officials huddled after the play and determined that forward progress had been stopped. Therefore, there was no fumble on the play. It was. It is not uncommon for officials that are not certain in real time of the status of a loose ball to let the play finish before gathering together to compare notes to correctly officiate the play. I get that. I get the let the play play out. Yes. But, but the ruling or what after their discussion is what we all don't understand. I mean, there was no whistle, right? This no. was an incomplete football play, which I felt like completed with the end zone. In yeah. the end zone. I, it, it doesn't make any sense at all. And, and letting the play happens it doesn't make sense to why they overturn it i, I don't understand i have no idea why it happens i'm glad that they let the play happen because there, right. there's so many times where i see a fumble or an incomplete pass or whatever and i'm just like why are you blowing the whistle like that's what we're reviews for but the overturn it i, I just don't understand i really don't that would that changed the momentum of the entire game so, it did i mean that 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 makes this a tennessee victory is yeah. what it does it does I, I don't. I don't even know what to say. To I it. mean, I, I, I'm not really one to ever kind of get involved with all this bullshit like this because I tend to believe what happens on the field is what happens on the field. But I mean, this was just so egregious. I can't understand it. Okay. The, and these refs, there was another time I can't remember the game, but years a couple years ago they were suspended because of something that was so bad. Yeah, I re, I can't find it anywhere, but I remember hearing about that too. It was 2016. I, I can't remember it. I have to look it up. But it was it was so bad they were publicly suspended. Uh, for for changing calls on the field that would affect a game. Yeah. So now between players laying down, mm -hmm. officiating calls throughout the game, tensions are really really high inside inside the stadium. Now we're gonna get there. And it's how long? It was a f <laughs> almost five hour game. Also. Yes. Long game. It's a long day. This was yeah. a night game, folks. Yeah. So these students had all day to prep, yeah. get yeah. ready, and so now we're they're seeing things on the field. With people laying down, they're seeing questionable at best officiating decisions. I want to get to the end of the game first before we go there. But uh, let's talk about this end of game sequence with Milton or lack thereof. Who wants to comment about what the <laughs> hell we just saw there? All right. Um, in my mind, look, guys, we're, we're fans where we're not experts, but in my mind, I am not like a football genius, but I've played NCAA football <laughs> and Madden football many a times. And it's all a lot of times it comes down to the last second play. And one thing I do know is you hit the button and you throw it up. 
You don't ever run out of bounds to end the game. That is the stupidest. That is the lowest form of football IQ that I have ever seen ever. Parker, he looked shocked when he ran out. He looked like, well, I thought I still had more time. Well, and there were players that were visibly upset on his team. They were like, what in the fuck are you doing? <laughs> because that's what they were. They weren't looking like that because they were thinking that. They were saying it. <laughs> it was the. It was literally, I'm trying to think in my head, what worse could have happened on that play? I literally can't think of anything. I'd rather him fumble the freaking ball. At least he was trying to do something. I'd yeah. rather him throw it out the, of the stadium to the fat guy on the seventh row. Maybe it hits the upright and comes back. Yeah, and someone catches it. Maybe he could punt it for no apparent reason or throw it up behind his head. Anything. Literally. Anything. Other than just running it out, out of bounds. I, 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 I have no explanation. He should never play again. And if he plays, I do, or the, his receivers, just like, screw it. I mean, he just – he didn't give us a chance there at the end. And, and honestly, we had the momentum that you never know what could have happened if he would have just chucked it up. You never know. I, I want to know – and this isn't on Hypo at all, but I want to know what Hypo was thinking because you know he was talking to him before the play. Here's of what we're going to do. It was a timeout. Yeah, yeah, here's what we're going to do. Here's what's going on. And he went out there and did that. You think he was like well, – yeah, well, you know that he, he – Heupel's a really good X's and O's guy. You yes. know that he told him that, all right, if you don't get in, you got to – we've got to give ourselves a chance. We can't run out of – we can't let the – we can't run. We can't slide. Can't do any of that shit. We've got to get the ball in the end zone, period. It was also bad because the game was fun. Like, it was close. It was back and forth. It just sucked as an inning. Yeah, it did. It was, it did. It was a poop. Yeah, it's just like – well, that's kind of yeah. It's like we've played this game the way that we've played it the whole game, and then it's like nothing. That's how it ends. Yeah, we've been watching for five hours for that, and it was totally a tease because he actually made a play or two before that that was of like, course okay, that's that. okay. And then it's like it comes down to the end. You're like, what are we doing? Why did he ever start? He must just be a hell of a practice player because I don't know why he ever started above Hooker. He threatened to throw a football through someone's face. Is what it was. <laughs> He can throw it. I'll, I've never seen anyone with less touch. But I mean, does Harrison Bailey do better than that? They haven't. I don't mentioned know. him. At he, all. I, I have no idea. You, you know what he doesn't do? He doesn't do. He doesn't do worse. What could he do worse than running out of bounds? He wouldn't have run it out of bounds because no. he wouldn't have tried to run. No, he would. He would have got it in the end zone. Yeah, it may have been awful duck out of bounds. Who knows? But it would have been. It, you meet all three of us would have done better than that. Uh, I would have closed my eyes and thrown it to the end zone. Should have done something. at least. You got three six foot three receivers in the end zone. Throw it, get them all over there in a the corner and throw it up to them. And, and you're not playing against Georgia. I, that's no. what I was about to say. I was going to say, and remember, it was old Mrs. D. I mean, well, and honestly, geez. there was a pl- <laughs> the play right before Milton threw the ball. He threw it too high to to Cedric oh, Tillman. Oh God, that was right through the hands. Oh, I mean, it was very close. It was one of those where it's just like. It was just a little bit too high. You know, it's like if you just do that two times in a row, I doubt that we miss it, yeah. you know? Oof. So, uh, yeah, that ended the game sequence. Disappointing. Disappointing for the the Vols fans here. But uh, It was the right pick. <laughs> yeah. Sort of one. I was yeah. the only one that got it. But, uh, all right. So You we'll like go. that little jab you just threw in there? You like that? <laughs> hey. Well, hey. hey so we sometimes, sometimes, the right, right, makers come. I, sometimes the right pick doesn't always win. That's true. That's definitely true. I mean, I got some plenty of jabs towards myself later but um all right let's talk about the the two elephants in the room here we're going to start with all this tension building up everyone saw the craziness with mustard and (laughs) golf balls and whatever they could find in their britches they were throwing onto the field um just boiling point no it's not acceptable but uh this was just a few fans, right? In the grand scheme of things. So <clears throat> I've got several different takes on this. Um, let's start from the very beginning, entering the game. How do you get a bottle of mustard? How do you get a golf ball in? I mean, I have a feeling it's probably in their pants or something. And just why? <laughs> uh, I mean, well, we know why. For, for my hot dog. We, we, we know why we got the golf ball in there. But but the, po- the point is, is we got to do a better job screening people. But second off, if you throw things on the field, you should be arrested. Period. I got that. I I think this is completely blown out of proportion by the national media. But 
if you throw things on the field, you should be arrested. Now, I do have another question. Why would, was this allowed to go on for 10 to 15 minutes before they did anything about it? That's a security problem. You, they should have jumped in faster. The, honestly, the student section starts throwing stuff consistently. They're gone. My mind. I think what's gone now is alcohol sales for the balls are gone. Um, what else did y'all see? What did they, I don't even know the uh, details. So, of I mean, there were rumors and this is all, I'm not saying this was fact. And, you know, there are people saying there was stuff coming from the old Miss bleachers up in the upper deck. I don't know if that's true or not. It doesn't matter. Again, if you throw things onto the field, you should be arrested. But this is the thing. It, this is not the first time that this something like this has happened. Everybody acts like this is just like never happened before and that it's the, the end of Tennessee college athletics and all this shit. And it's like, dude, the same thing happened at an Ole Miss Tennessee game, basketball game, where they just covered the floor in garbage at the end of the game and were actually hitting players with things as they were leaving the court. No national media attention, no fines, no nothing. This is a giant nothing burger. This is just a perpetuation of Tennessee fan hate. Everybody hates Tennessee fans, and this is just a, a really good opportunity for them to jump on their backs. I don't think there was coverage in those because, one, it was basketball. It wasn't football. Two, it was not Lane Kiffin. Um, it, was a big, it was a big moment, and it's just – you can't do it. I mean, like, I know a lot of people that are at the games. I have family members and friends and stuff that were there – and I asked them, I said, how many people were actually, you know, throwing them? Like, was it like a hundred people? And and my brother was one of them. He was like, no, man, it was, it was a lot. Like it was he, like, a thousand. he was like, it was a lot. Um, not a, you know, not a huge percentage or anything, but more than, you know, a hundred, <coughs> hundred. Not, not when you're talking about a hundred and something. Yeah, we're not, ta- we're not talking 20,000 people. Yeah, I'm talking, no. you know, 500 to a thousand, but not yeah. 50 to a hundred. You just can't do it. I mean, you, you, I don't care if it's happened before or not. You, you can't do it. The, the thing that I take away from this is that I haven't heard anyone talk about really is the response the SEC has. So the SEC comes out within 24 hours, right? Yeah. And they're like, we're finding you $250,000. We're investigating your alcohol sales. And you've got to go through all your security tape. And you've got to remove all those fans for the rest of the year from any Good Tennessee luck. functions. That, see, luck. that's my point. It's, it's why are we being made the example of all so, of a sudden? So because it's. It's sank. This is where I'm saying that the the NCAA should be doing these type of things for different schools. They take seven years to investigate. You know, I always use the LSU, and that we've got freaking tapes and videos and stuff from Kansas and and Arizona, and nothing comes out for years. How come Greg Sankey can do it within 24 hours? You know, you know this just shows me more of the, the more of a decline of the NCAA and more yep. of the power yep. of the SEC. Yep. Um, but as far as people throwing stuff on the field, unacceptable. Unacceptable. Uh, you, it, and you do it on national. I mean, I know it's SEC Network, but it's a national game at night. What? What? what is, if you're a recruit sitting on the sidelines watching that, thinking if you're going to Tennessee or not, and that happens, and the freaking band is getting pelted, and the mm-hmm. cheerleaders, it's just not good. I mean, it's not a good look. It's 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 just unacceptable. Disagree. I'm telling you, the recruits probably fucking loved it. I'm with I Parker disagree. No, wait, wait, wait. The parents might not like it. The recruits are going to love it because that's passion right there. Honestly, this was a horrible job of the stadium staff keeping control of the crowd. The, you know, we already know that the officiating crew lost control of the game from the first quarter. I mean, that doesn't excuse any of this. Like I said, if you throw things on the field, you should be arrested. They should have done a better job of managing that. Once it started to happen, it should have ended within three minutes. Where was KPD? Where was UTPT? Where were they? Well, you know, they had to freaking call in backup or whatever. They should have known this was a highly charged situation that something like this could potentially happen. But I do believe this, that we have the most passionate fans in America. And that come with that comes some some stuff like this. You got to own it, the good with the bad. This is just like Yankee fans throwing batteries on the field at John Rocker. It, you got to take the good and the bad. If you're going to be the bad boy, you better embrace it. That's all I'm going to say. Mister Anti Villain here at the end of this at this panel knows exactly what I'm talking about. If you're going to be the bad guy, be the bad guy. But you got to do it the right way. You can't be throwing shit on the field. Correct. Uh, that very last part is what I was about to say. 
you can embrace being the bad guy, but you that gives you no reason yeah. to throw things. Throwing no things on the field is inexcusable. Run yeah. onto the field, no reason to, you know, you know all the big yeah, things. Totally. I totally agree with that. Parker said you can't do that. Yeah, I don't care if you have the Vols logo on your chest, no. the Gators logo. You cannot do that. It's no. okay if you want to be the villain. But there's no excuse yeah. for this. Find a different outlet. Um, That's the only thing I got to say. If you want to say fuck Lane Kiffin over and over in the, in the stands, I don't care. Say that. They're not going to kick you out of the stands for that, probably. No. From but a, you know what? They are gonna. They should arrest you if you throw things onto the field. And they did that, that night, I know they arrested 18 people. I don't know what the number is up to now. Yeah. Um, but I do know that they, 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 I don't know what the charge is even for that. I have no idea. It's, it's got to be disorderly conduct. Yeah. And I think some of them, like if they find <laughs> out who hit, <laughs> if they find out who threw that golf ball, that should be assault. Yeah. Yeah. It's not good. So as the non Vols fan, I don't uh, want to place blame on the coaching staff no. um, here. Um, I don't think that this is a lack of control by no. uh, the coach. No, this was 100%. I don't even want to say fans. It, it was it had to be from the student section. I think the student section started it, and then yeah. you probably had several drunk folks Probably, around the yeah. student section that kept going. Because I I don't know. Your brother was there, right? Yeah. Was anything thrown on the Tennessee side? Yeah. I mean, he said it was everywhere. He but, said it was – I mean, I, I, he didn't see where it started really. It just all of a sudden was just kind of everywhere. Um, uh, so, uh, he doesn't really know. I mean, he just said, I just, cause my biggest thing was him was, cause I saw a lot of people on Twitter like, Oh, it's only a hundred people. And that was my specific question was. I, that, mean, I mean, that's a weak thing, but this is my thing. Also my message to Tennessee fans, to the big orange nation, you got it out of your system. The, the Kiffin thing. If you're going to throw a temper tantrum, let's, you did it once. Let's move on. Let's stop, stop all the, the, the bullshit. Like I said, if you want to be the anti-hero, if you want to be the, you know, kind of the the bad boy, that's fine. We're not gonna, we shouldn't be throwing things on the field. That I 100 percent do not support that. Well, and, they they may not get a chance to because now they put it into the administration's hands at UT, and and UT's also got some more news coming down the pike here. Old Jeremy Pruitt, he's reared his damn face again. Parker, you got some more news on Pruitt and his lawyer. Seeking a October 29th deadline yeah. for a settlement. Yeah, he's the Pruitt's an idiot. So Pruitt's come out and said, you guys are going to give me my money or I'm going to sue you and I'm going to tell all the dirty secrets, all the dirty laundry about people before me, during my my time, <laughs> people above me, all over program, everybody. And I'm going to end Tennessee's sports forever, pretty Jeez. much is what he said. My views on this are a couple of fold. One, <coughs> he waited for an opportune time when Tennessee is – obviously hurting after that in the spotlight in the spotlight already looking horrible so Mm -hmm. he's going to put this out there but it's so easy to see through this he is an absolute what could he know about basketball recruiting or other other sports what could he know about the time before him in this entire long statement he sent out he doesn't deny doing anything wrong to me it's just him going i was really bad and i know stuff about other people and the other thing this is him trying to get his payday because guess what? After putting this statement out, he will never, ever nope. coach for any major school ever because nobody's going to trust him. I'm going to tell you, I don't think he'll coach anywhere else other than the Giants where he's at. If he tries to leave again, because if you have the reputation for of someone who tries to soothe your former employer, I don't care if it's a, a college or not. It doesn't matter. You know, this little temper tantrum shit is it does not fly. It just does not. And honestly, I mean, you're right. He did not deny any of the allegations, which I found very uh, interesting, to say the least. And then he tried to bring in Rick Barnes into this. (laughs) And he's known as one of the most squeaky clean guys ever. And Rick Barnes told him, he said, look. I welcome the NCAA to come in tomorrow yeah. if they want to I'll investigate our program. I do not care because I know I have done nothing wrong. And even Barnes was like, I'm sorry that somebody would make up these allegations against somebody that did nothing but support them the entire time. Yeah. And he and he was just like, Jeremy is in the position that he's in because of things that Jeremy did. And, and Fulmer came out, too, and said, hey, I told him not we hired that, hey, this is Tennessee football. We are a major university, a mm-hmm. powerhouse. You do not have to cheat here to win. Mm-hmm. And Pruitt, I just I could not believe if he he obviously doesn't want to coach again. I mean, because there's just no way. So, I mean, but the question is, is does Tennessee just settle just to make it go away or 
uh, do, does, do they just, I know they've said bring it on in public, but do they just settle just to make it, make him shut up? I don't understand why he didn't do this silently or maybe he did. And then, and then, and Tennessee maybe settles silently in my head, like, Hey, we're just whatever, but coming out publicly yeah. now, if Tennessee settles, does it look like we're guilty? I think it looks bad. No, it's no, a public perception now, but I don't know that it does. I think it does. I think, I mean, uh, to me, I I understand why someone would think so, Mm -hmm. but I'm sitting here and thinking, I'm like, that means that maybe your argument's weak. Yeah, if they can, here's because I think it's more powerful to, if you go to Tennessee privately, like you're saying, and say, look, y'all are going through some shit right now, and I know some shit, and you know I know some shit. But maybe he did. That's what, like maybe the vol or the administration never responded to him. And maybe, why would you go public again? Then? But, but because maybe they he weren't saying it. But maybe he went public because they weren't doing anything right. privately. Yeah. But but the only way I think they settle and look good in this is if, and they could put this out there: lawyer fees to defend this are going to be five million dollars, and we settled for three. Mm-hmm. Instead, but if they come out and they settle for twelve or whatever yeah. it is, but if they come, if settles fine, but it's got to be less than the cost of defending the lawsuit. Mm-hmm. Um, if they do that, then bring it on. Yeah, man. I, I again, I just find it interesting that he did not argue that there was cause to, <laughs> to fire. Yeah, you'd think that that would have been like one of the top things yeah. that you would say. Like, I didn't do anything, but I saw. Yeah, no. exactly. No. We ready to turn the page? Yeah, golly, let's get off the thirty let's get minutes off the balls. Tennessee. Jesus, thirty minutes. The game. Whew. All right, we're turning the page to Florida Gators. Florida Gators coming into last week were riding high as they should have. They won their homecoming game, whoopee, <laughs> against the Vanderbilt, 42 to nothing. But we called out that there were some concerns. We saw Florida penalties again and again and again. Blake, you keep uh, mentioning, the, you know, discipline. coaching and discipline. Yeah. They had turnovers by their quarterbacks against Vandy, of all things. They only rushed for 181 in what I called – they're just trying to be silly, trying to throw the ball around with both uh, Richardson and Jones. But man, good grief! Any any quick thoughts about the Vandy thing with Florida, or do we just jump right into LSU? Number one, I called the score exactly on the number. <laughs> number two, I think that you know I, we continued to see at this point uh, against Vanderbilt yeah. the, the the penalties, and and traditionally, as we've all talked about, that's a usually a sign of an undisciplined team. You know, you conversely, you look at Tennessee, they have they play very clean football. They're not necessarily winning as much as Florida, but you can tell that they're well coached because they're playing clean. Anyways, moving on. Do you have any Vandy thoughts? Of no, that? Or just that no, big nothing. Van, Vandy is, I mean, it's not in that ball, not in the no. same ballpark. No. All right. So we had those concerns leading into Florida versus LSU. This has been a very strange rivalry of, over the years between these two teams. Um, I'm watching this game and I, I, I'm like, where the hell is the defense at here? I, I didn't expect this to be a, a UT Ole Miss type game, but uh, the Florida Gators lose their third straight to LSU 49 to 42 in an unbelievable fashion. Four INTs combined for the Florida quarterbacks, man. Um, Dan Mullen coming into this season, we said that his recruiting would be tested this year. Could he turn it over? I think that's a big fat no, he couldn't. And their defensive coordinator's got to go. I mean, this Ty Davis Price dude, they were running the same play over yep. and over. What was it, a counter or and something? Over. And gosh darn over one more time. Yep. Right. I I mean, there's just not much to say. I mean, um, defense couldn't stop anybody. Offense was – Lackluster to say the least. I mean, like you said, I guess they just got to the where they just want to throw the ball around because they did not really run the ball. Um, I got nothing. I mean, uh, clearly Dan Mullen is has not been stocked in the cupboard, and um, the defense for Florida just all of a sudden was non-existent. The, the turnovers were the difference, you know, and in Florida ran for 138 yards. What's that? You know, they led the country up in the first three games. They have the same record as Tennessee. Yeah. Yeah. I, I just, they beat Kentucky. They're, they, they have a chance to finish above Florida. Yep. Right. I, 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 we talk about coaches on hot seats all the time. Where's Dan Mullen? I think it's hot. I it's got to be real hot, which is weird because they started off the year and it was like, man, you know, 
Florida, you know, they they're, they they got this weird offense where they just run the ball a bunch. But, you know, now all of a sudden they've had a few bad games and they decide to throw it around and get away from their identity. Now they're not even going to finish, you know, nope. very strong. That's why they lost those games. I, I say it every time in our prediction picks. I'm like, if just stay who you are. Mm-hmm. Run the ball and play solid defense. And the last two weeks, even in a 42 to nothing game, we called out the concern of why are they throwing the ball so much? They can't tackle either. No. I, I mean, I just every I'm sitting there watching the neither team. Both both it felt like every single play was a 40 yard touchdown. Mm. It, it was yeah, I, I don't know. It was I mean, it was fun to watch cuz it was so high scoring, but like it I mean, was, can you win though in the SEC throwing four interceptions in a game? No. No, you can't no. win. I mean, that's that's terrible. If now if you flip that around though, if they didn't throw one, which obviously they did, they probably run away with the game, right? I mean, no. that's four extra possessions and four less for LSU. Uh, only if they ran the ball to run out the clock. I mean, but they're over there throw, 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 throw. throw. What are they trying to prove here? Man? I, I don't know. And, you know, it's a, it's against a team that, you know, I know we're going to talk about this here in a second, that that honestly has been down on Coach O, obviously, yeah. in, in the in the locker room. So, I mean, it's not like it, it's a team that's like rallying or anything. I mean, this is an LSU team that's struggling, quite frankly. Yeah, and I, I'm looking at the box score, this is another one of those you just look at it and it feels like Florida should have won. I mean, we're talking about penalties. <laughs> Flopping the 300 stuff. Yeah, look passing. at this. There's no of rush. way they should pass. But total play. yards, they, they win. You just combine that with those interceptions, though. Those turnovers yeah. just absolutely killed them. They did respond with penalties this time. No penalties. Yeah, I guess they focused on that. But but not on the reception. No. <laughs> we could have one or the other. <sighs> it's bad. I, then this LSU team. I don't, I don't know if they already knew about Coach O and were just responding to to that. Um, well, Blake argues that they should have been laying down. Like no, you said, didn't you say no one wanted to play for Coach O anymore? Which well, led to the decision. The rumor is is no one wanted to play for him. They 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 all the players hated him. <laughs> they couldn't stand him. And they were ready to move on. And supposedly they told him before they told everybody before the weekend. Well, there was one player that played for him. And I want to give a quick call out to this dude before we talk about Coach O. Running back Ty <laughs> Ty Davis Price yeah. just told Leonard Fournette to take a back seat 287 <laughs> yards with three touchdowns. Kudos to you, young man. <laughs> You know what though? That wasn't we were so I was just talking about it. Florida couldn't tackle. I mean, this guy, it was unbelievable. Was watching the same him. damn play. It was unbelievable. Counter right. Counter right. Yeah. Uh, and that's I mean, if Coach Mullen wants to take a little bit of heat off of himself, he's going to have to address the defensive coordinator thing. Like someone's head has to roll, Blake. And if it's not, if he's not going to take action there, then all the heat will remain on him. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it, it's just a weird situation, quite frankly. Coach O. I mean, Parker, uh, I feel like that that was weird. It's hard to imagine LSU going forward without him. You know, gold tigers. Yeah. But he's gone. And it's over. What do you think about the kind of the way it's all happening where they're allowing him to finish the season? I, I think there's a lot of moving pieces to this. So, so one, I think they're allowing him to finish the season because, I mean, he won a national championship there mm-hmm. just two years ago. And they uh, – they're letting him finish it so he'll be kind of go out quietly. Because the reason he's leaving uh, isn't for the play on the field. It's right. for the off the field, bringing girls around the locker rooms, stuff getting leaked out is why, is why he's leaving. Because if it was on the field, it would blow my mind. Because think about this. Coach O is LSU football. Like, that's where he wanted to be, Right. Two years ago, wins a national championship, and then they fire basically fire him, push mm-hmm. him out of two. Could you imagine being another coach trying to go for that job? You're like this guy that won a national championship is gone in two years. Like I don't, I, I don't want to go there. Screw mm-hmm. that. So I, I think they're trying to let him finish the season just for to, just to be to, for it to be quiet because yeah. there's just a lot of stuff out there. I don't really think that's mainstream, and I think that they want to keep it that way. So I mean, and, and again, guys, we're fans. We're not insiders experts anything like that you know is this just like you're saying is this a case of a program saying we're keeping this inside where we're not we're, we're going to do our best to keep this inside we don't want to become a tennessee we don't want to become you know some kind of scandalous situation and bring negative attention to the program 
Yeah, you finish it out through the year. All of a sudden, he gets fired after a win against Florida. Now, now alarm bells are going exactly. off. Exactly. Mm. You let him finish it off. Yeah, it's reported. Some people hit on it. But it's like, oh, it's after the end of the year. We've mutually agreed to part ways. It kind of looks looks kind of happy, you know? Yeah, I kind of, I agree. Uh, I think that's where it is. And I, I think some of these players, and a lot of them probably did quit on him, but some of them went there to play for him. Mm-hmm. And so maybe maybe LSU's the bet going forward because those maybe those players respond or you know or maybe they quit on the university and all transfer out. But I do think it's really just to keep everything kind of quiet. Yeah, I, yeah. Agree. I think very interesting storylines after this game. Uh, the Coach O story will not be done quite yet, and of course, all eyes in Florida are still on Dan Mullen. We're going to switch the page over to Parker's favorite Iowa. <laughs> now let's go back a little bit uh, heading into this week. Then number three, Iowa comes off of a 23 to 20 victory over Penn State, where Parker says, again, another example of Iowa just getting lucky. They collect four more interceptions off of a backup quarterback. Another injury happens. You know, uh, their their punter is their MVP, apparently, <laughs> with Tory Taylor, six of them inside the 20, multiples inside the five. God, they came into last week's game, of course, with those four. Four picks from two weeks ago, 16 leading all of FBS. But you're just saying it's BS. It is BS. <laughs> it is absolutely BS. And Purdue beat them down, and it wasn't even close. Iowa turned the ball over four times. And you would think, oh, maybe Purdue had that luck, and they went and scored. No, on those four turnovers, Purdue scored zero. So, so it could have been so worse. more luck. Could have been worse. It, it was more luck. Or it could have been Iowa won even with that, since they produced no points. Exactly. <laughs> It, it, they just nothing. The 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 quarterback was bad. I will say Iowa. The one thing they did have, they have one of the best cornerbacks in the in in college football. He was out for this game. Um, now it wasn't one of Iowa's things where their guy gets hurt in the middle of the game. They knew it going into the game that he wasn't playing. It just it ran out. It had to. There's a too much. We talked about it every single week. There's just yeah. too much luck, and it can't continue. But I will say they could still be in the national. Oh level. no, I was about to ask. I mean, now that they've lost, are they done? Done. And you're saying they're still hanging around for a back door? They went out. Oh, come on. They went out. They beat Ohio State, and they're in. Yeah, I mean, dude, it's a weird year in college football for that kind of stuff. But, yeah, I mean, the bad offensive play can only go on for so long. Your defense can only bail you out so many times. And let's – I'm not taking anything away from their defense. They have have a good defense. But their offense is abysmal. It finally caught up with them. Yeah, and this was Purdue. I mean, they didn't have – uh, I was trying to think of all the quarterbacks for Purdue. They didn't have freaking uh, – uh, oh, my God. New they didn't have Drew Brees. Thank you. Drew Brees. That's <laughs> what I was trying to think of. Drew Brees, Jake Plummer back there. Um, so, yeah, they just – they got picked apart. Yep. Ouch. And then quick – By three. the way, this was the first game I didn't bet them to lose. <laughs> 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 of course that's how that happens. Yep, that's exactly how it goes. And then quick uh, – three quick reactions that uh, – we had last week that we didn't record here. Uh, let's talk about Bama losing. Uh, they lost to an unranked team for the first time in what was it, 101 games? Their 100 game win streak over unranked teams is gone. They lost 41 to 38. Also, we called out that assistance against Nick Saban are now, they've improved to 1 and 24 all time versus Nick Saban. Yeah, I mean, what can you say? I mean, it was a big game. The players for Texas A&M actually showed up. The fans showed up at College Station. I mean, look, uh, I still think Texas a and is fraudulent. Uh, I think that this was just a case that, I mean, for the first time I saw a Nick Saban defense look overwhelmed. Um, and they <laughs> they ended up losing the game for him. I mean, I felt like they played good enough offense to be able to win the game, but defense would just fell apart. And I echo that. And just real quick, I think Bama, after watching it, real concerns with their defense, real concerns still with quarterback and Dinkin Duncan and going downfield. I think they lose two more games and miss the college football playoff. Okay. I think if they lose one more game, they're done. If they even if I think even if they freaking lose the SEC championship, they'll find a way to kick it, get them out. And then other concerns around the world with the quarterback situations. We saw Oklahoma bench their. Heisman hopeful quarterback for Caleb Williams in the game against Texas. They ended up winning, coming back in a wild finish, 55 to 48. But the big story was, you know, he's gone. He's benched. I mean, is he coming back? No, Caleb Williams is good. Wow. Yeah. 
And um, God, I can't even remember his name. That? What's his Spencer. name again? Spen- uh, Rattler. Rattler. Rattler took o- took the OU symbol off of his social media page. Holy. Then you know, we know that that means curtains for anybody. Yep. <laughs> Jesus. And then lastly, um, the team you love to hate, South Carolina. What? Tell me about the ending of this 21 to 20 Vandy loss. They Vandied mm. it. Oh, man. Mm. Come on. Mm. 21 to 20. Oh, that was a heartbreaker uh, for West End. Pull noodle. It just, I really thought this would be the game. They should have won. I mean, they gave up a 75 yard drive to a backup quarterback to lose the game with a minute to go. That's so bad. I, was that the grad uh, guy again? No, it, it was, uh, no, because I think the grad guy's a starter. Luck for Luke. Luke. I don't even Doty. remember. I don't even know this guy's name. I'd have to look it up. He went Doty? Was it Doty? 75 yeah. yards in his only drive to win the game. Come on, Vandy. You got it, man. Is, but you know what? Is can't bad? put it away. Is it, is it bad? Can't put it away. It, I don't know if this is worse for Vandy or worse for South Carolina. <laughs> They're both uh, They're I mean, both so bad. Pull noodle. Pull noodle. God. That's it. That's all my reaction. You got anything else before we wrap it? Wrap it. Spike it. Nothing, man. Spike it in the end zone. Run out of bounds. Yeah, this show's run over. out of bounds. Just run out of Joe <laughs> But yeah, guys, hey, thanks for joining us today on our reaction show. Thanks for sticking with us. I know we had some uh, AV problems here, but we appreciate you being patient with us. Uh, go ahead and check us out on Twitter at DDS Sports Talk. Like, subscribe, comment there. Tell us what you think. Uh, Bama going down. Uh, tell us what you think about this Ole Miss Tennessee situation. Was the, the Tennessee stuff, uh, was it justified? Was the SEC justified in their punishments? Probably so, but I'd love to hear from you. But uh, anyways, uh, any parting thom- comments, guys? <sighs> I don't, no, I, I got nothing. <laughs> I, yeah, I say I gators, ouch. Yeah, guys, remember to like and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Hit the notification bell and go big orange. <laughs>